Grace and peace to you today. This week, we're looking at the spiritual discipline of study. Now, I must admit, when I first started looking at this and and reading for it, uh, I was only really thinking in terms of the study of Scripture. Um, But while Richard Foster, who wrote the book that I'm using for this, uh, does say the Bible is the most important book to study, it's certainly not the only one to study, nor are books the only thing that we can study. The Apostle Paul says in Romans that we should be transformed by the renewal of our minds. The tricky thing is, our minds can be formed or transformed in all sorts of directions, depending on what it is that we're exposed to. So the things that we take in, uh, the way uh, they really shape the way that we see and experience the world around us. Um, Whether it is the TV that we watch and the stories that it tells, uh, whether it's the sources that we go to to get our news, Um, or the people that we spend time with. Uh, Whatever we take in, uh, those things begin to shape the way that we see the world around us and the events that take place. Study as a spiritual discipline is when we are being intentional about what we take in and how we engage it, so that with careful attention to it, our minds are enabled to be formed in a certain direction. Um, you know, the direction that we choose based on what it is we take in and what it is we give that attention to. Foster says that study is one of the central ways that God uses to change us, which means study can happen with books or in lectures on certain topics, but it doesn't only have to happen there. It can also happen in what Foster calls nonverbal areas, like uh, observations of things, events, and actions that take place. One thing that study really demands of us is it demands humility. We must be willing to be subject to the study matter, to be willing to be changed by it and not read uh, only to argue with it, not study it only to try to prove it wrong, which is why we need to be intentional about the things that we study because we're letting ourselves be vulnerable to those things uh, and, and letting ourselves be changed by those things. So what we study is very important. Uh, One thing um, that's important to note is there's a difference between study and devotion. Um, Both of those things are really good. Uh, Reading to study is really good. Reading for devotion is really good. But study places a high priority on interpretation, a high priority on um, figuring out what that thing means, while devotional reading places a priority on what it means to me. Both of those things are really good, but we're, we're reading with two different intentions uh, in those two things. Foster says that uh, as we study, there are four steps to study. There's uh, first repetition, that we do something over again. Um, and as we do it, it channels the mind in a specific direction, ingraining habits. You remember uh, a lot of times people will have uh, mantras that they tell themselves, hoping that eventually they'll believe them, like, telling themselves that they are loved and that they are worthy, which is a wonderful thing to tell yourself. And hopefully you end up believing that uh, as you repeat that over and over. That's true for how we read uh, or how we take in and study other things. The second is concentration, uh, which may be one of the hardest. Concentration means that we push away all of the distraction uh, and it centers the mind on one thing. For me personally, I have to go somewhere other than my house and somewhere other than my office if I'm really going to study something because those are two places where there are always other expectations of me, other tasks to get done, uh, things that are pulling at me, even if it's my own need to accomplish them. I have to go somewhere else uh, with the, the topic at hand so that I'm intentionally studying just that thing. The third step is comprehension. Uh, where we not only have the information, but we've processed it so that it becomes knowledge. These are those aha moments when something finally clicks, and then it's able to not only be something that we can regurgitate, but it's something that can also shape us, and that's something we can put to use. And the fourth step to study is reflection, when we're able to name the significance of what we've read. Foster says that reflection is what helps us begin to see things from God's perspective. Uh, One thing that's important to note is that when we read uh, or when we study in general, um, that we do some of this work internally uh, um, just with ourselves and and the thing that we're studying, that um, we do our own work to understand and interpret and evaluate what it is what we're studying. But we also use tools outside of just us and the topic. 
Um, we use our own experiences um, that, that we've had uh, and kind of weigh the, the topic with those experiences. We use other books and other resources uh, to inform and weigh that topic. And we use each other that we read and study and discuss with one another so that other people's experiences and other people's wisdom uh, helps to give meaning to whatever it is that we're studying as well. If you're looking to study scripture, uh, a couple things that are helpful um, is if we are to read the entire book of the Bible all at once. Um, one thing that, that this really does is it, it gives us the entire narrative and the entire context um, so that we're not um, uh, taking something away from, from uh, the context it was in and away from some of the things that help to inform the meaning of it. Um, so if we're really trying to study reading the entire book and getting the entire context and narrative is helpful. And then digging into it for a while uh, is helpful. Perhaps reading it multiple times over a month and writing notes about places that are challenging and, and then looking for wisdom on them. And then uh, when we have some wisdom on those, going back and reading the whole thing again uh, with that new bit of wisdom, um, that's helpful as, as we look at studying scripture. When it comes to nonverbal study, uh, we can really study anything. We can study relationships between people. We can study uh, the way we speak, what we use speech for, um, and, and uh, have value in that. We can even study ourselves, and we probably should way more than we do. Uh, I think counseling uh, and, and seeing therapists is, is a really helpful thing in this, um, not only in times of crisis for folks, but, um, but it's one way that we, we kind of study and understand ourselves um, uh, we can begin to understand why be, we behave certain ways, why we like or dislike certain people and things like that. Um, so we can study all sorts of things. Foster really lifts up the study of nature as something that's important to study uh, outside of written works, saying that crea the created order has much to teach us. With nonverbal things, we begin by paying attention uh, seeing and observing, what Foster calls reverent observation. So just uh, looking with respect and, and kind of new observation and intention at things that we've probably seen hundreds or thousands of times before. About studying nature, Dostoevsky says, uh, says that to love, uh, says that we should love all of God's creation, the whole and every grain of sand in it, love every leaf, every ray of God's light. Love the animals, love the plants, love everything. If you love everything, you will perceive the divine mystery in all things. Once you perceive it, you will begin to comprehend it better every day. Ultimately, whether we're looking at scripture or other works of faith, uh, whether we're looking at uh, verbal things or nonverbal things like relationships or nature, that's what we're trying to do, to learn to perceive the divine in the people and things around us and to begin to comprehend it, allowing God to work God's grace in us so that we see with God's eyes and love with God's heart. So I hope that this uh, gives you just a, a hint at the spiritual discipline of study um, and how we can apply it in some different ways. Uh, I think um, one thing it does is it just helps us to open our eyes uh, to, to the breadth of ways and places that God is at work all around us uh, and, uh, and, and begin to, um, to look with new eyes at those things and, and to have a new interest and a love and appreciation of so many things. Um, if we could only do that just with people around us, and have a love and an interest of them and, and a desire to see God working in them and comprehend that a bit more every day. Uh, what a beautiful way that would be to move through the world. So I lift this up to you uh, as the spiritual discipline for the day. Uh, I hope it gives you some new insight and, and possibly some new interest in diving in. God's peace.